Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part two of lesson 1.4. We're going to focus on using the angle addition postulate and also talk a little bit about congruent angles. When we're looking at angles, there's this thing called the angle addition postulate. So if we take a look at our picture, we've got this big angle RST, and then it's got that ray that runs from S to P going down the middle of it. And what that does is it splits this bigger angle into two smaller angles. So the way our angle addition postulate works is if we take the two small angles and add them together, then that measure should equal the big angle. So we would write that out as the measure of angle RSP, so that's this small angle on the top, plus the measure of angle PST, so the small angle on the bottom. When we add those things together, those two measures, it should equal the measure of the bigger angle, which in this picture is RST. Before we get too far into this example, I'm going to write out the angle addition postulate again. So the measure of angle RSP plus the measure of angle PST is going to equal the measure of the big angle RST. Now if we look at what we've got, we're told that the measure of angle RST is 145 degrees. Then if we look at the two smaller angles, there are some algebraic expressions. In the RSP angle, we've got 2x plus 10. In the PST angle, we've got 4x minus 3. Those are going to represent the measures of those angles. So what I'm going to do up here is just start plugging in the information we have. So for the measure of angle RSP, that's this 2x plus 10. For the measure of angle PST, that's the 4x minus 3. And we've got addition happening between those. And that's got to equal the measure of our big angle, RST, which we're told is 145 degrees. So there's our angle addition postulate set up with some actual things plugged in there. Now what I'm going to do is look at combining like terms on the left hand side. So we've got a 2x and a 4x. So if we add those together, that's 6x. We've got a plus 10 and a minus 3. So that should give us a plus 7. And that's going to equal 145. Now if we think about this like algebra solving, we need to get x all by itself. So with this plus 7, first thing I'm going to do is subtract 7 from both sides. So we end up with 6x equals 138. And then if we divide both sides by this 6 in order to get rid of that multiplication, we get x equals 23. As always, feel free to pause the video at any time with these extra examples. Try it out on your own, and then you can come in and check your answers. So on this one, what we're looking at is we've got this KLM big angle. And I'll tell you that that's a straight angle. So if we think about what it means to be a straight angle, that means the measure of angle KLM is 180 degrees. So setting up our angle addition postulate, if we add up the two small measures, it should equal the big measure. So we've got 10x minus 5 plus 4x plus 3. Those are our two small angles. That's got to equal our big angle, which is 180. Now if we combine like terms, we've got 10x and 4x. So that's 14x. We've got a minus 5 and a plus 3. So that gives us a minus 2. And that equals 180. If we look at getting rid of that minus 2, we'll add 2 to both sides. So we get 14x equals 182. And then if we divide both sides by 14 in order to get rid of that multiplication, we should get x equals 13. In this example, we can see that our angle has that box down in the left-hand corner. Remember, that means that we're dealing with a right angle or a 90-degree angle. So if we start setting up our angle addition postulate on this one, I'm going to add up the two small angles. So we've got 2x plus 2 plus x plus 1 equals our big angle. Since it has that box, it's a 90-degree angle. Combining like terms, 2x and x is 3x. Plus 2 and plus 1 gives us plus 3 equals 90. If we subtract 3 from both sides, we get 3x equals 87. And then dividing both sides by 3, we should get an x value of 29. Next thing we're talking about is congruent angles. And remember that word congruent means exactly the same size. So if we look at this picture, we've got angle A and angle B. And I'm going to tell you that those two angles are congruent. They're exactly the same size. 
visually when we're marking angles as congruent, we're going to use a little arc down in the corner of the angle. So we could put one arc on angle A, and we could put one arc on angle B. Since those are marked similarly, we would say that those two angles are congruent. It could also be marked with two arcs, or it could be marked with three arcs, but as long as those angles are marked exactly the same, we know that they're congruent. Now when we're talking about congruence, remember it's like an equal sign with a squiggly line over the top of it. The angles themselves are congruent, but as soon as we start talking about how big they are, what their measures are, then we have to use this idea of being equal. They're related ideas, but the shape itself, the angle itself, we would say those things are congruent, but if we're talking numbers and measures, those things are equal. One way we can get congruent angles is something called an angle bisector. And an angle bisector is a ray that takes an angle and splits it into two smaller congruent angles. So if we take a look at this picture, we're told that the ray YW bisects the big angle XYZ. So this YW ray is splitting this big angle into two congruent pieces. So I'm going to put one arc on this left angle and one arc on this right angle. So now we could say that angle X, Y, W is congruent to angle W, Y, Z. Or if we were talking about their measures, we would say the measure of angle X, Y, W is equal to the measure of angle W, Y, Z. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.